Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about the SciSpace Copilot which is a Chrome extension that will supercharge your scientific research in a number of ways. Now if you don't know much about SciSpace, it is a place where you can find over 270 million research papers on various kinds of topics. The goal here was to help out researchers who waste a lot of time looking on the internet for relevant information, formatting and reformatting papers and other mindless tasks. Now before we get started, if this is your first time to my channel, I want to welcome you and recommend you to subscribe to my AI newsletter where I'm going to soon start sending out hand-drawn AI workflows that I create for myself. Now SciSpace is currently accessible on typeset.io, I'm going to have the link in the description, where as soon as you make an account, you're going to instantly get access to a lot of research papers. These range from papers from popular conferences, today's trending topics, most read journals, papers from top institutions, and trending questions. But the main AI tool I want to talk about today is called Copilot for Chrome. So as soon as you click on this link on top, you're going to see this Chrome extension called SciSpace Copilot. Now this is free to use and has over 100,000 users already. Now after you have it installed, make sure to enable it from your Chrome extensions right here. And after that, if you click on any of these papers right here, the Copilot will pop up on the right as a chatbot similar to ChatGPT or Harpa AI. Now to get started on the different features of Copilot, let me start a small research. So yesterday I was doing some research on cholesterol. So what I'm going to do is to just type that right here and press enter. And now I have over 68,000 results to work with. Let me just click on the first one right here. The topic is called HDL cholesterol, very low levels of LDL cholesterol and cardiovascular events. So usually when I do some research, I get my PDF in full screen mode right here. And now all the distractions are gone and now I can focus on this paper. The first feature of the Copilot I want to explain today is explanation and summarization. For instance, I want to have Copilot explain a small section of this article. So what I'm going to do is to highlight on a small section right there up to here. And now you see the option in the middle called explain text. So when I click that, Copilot starts getting active and just takes the portion of the text that I highlighted and provides me a detailed explanation. Here it says, the highlighted text refers to the analysis of the relationship between HDL cholesterol levels and the occurrence of major cardiovascular events in patients who were treated with statins. And it goes on and provides me a pretty detailed explanation of what I need to know. Now, just like the explain functionality, if you want to summarize a larger piece of text, for instance, I want Copilot to summarize the background, methods, results, and conclusions of this section. So what I'm going to do is to select that whole section right there and click summarize. In summary, it says HDL cholesterol levels are predictive of major cardiovascular events. And this was found in the post hoc analysis of the treating of new targets or TNT study. It also provides me a clinical trial number of this article. All right, the next feature I want to talk about is this notes section. So for instance, I just found a few things from my research right here. For example, maybe this clinical trial number, and I want to save it for future use in my notes. So what I can do is instead of going to a different document, I can just have notes associated to this article and click add a note. And I can just go ahead and save that trial number and keep it saved right there. So now every time I refer back to this article, I can just go to my notes and see what notes I wrote. And you can also add additional notes, like for instance, I can just write, this was found while testing AI and click save. And now I can keep saving the notes and it's going to get timestamped as well. All right, for the next feature of the Copilot, I'm going to use this article called Scaling Learning Algorithms Towards AI. So this article actually is from 2007 and I was curious about reading it because I want to know what was going on in AI research back in 2007. And by the way, you can access your library on the top right here. So every time you look for an article, you can save it to your library and organize it according to folders. I'm going to click on this paper right there and it's already showing up in full screen mode because that's what I said before. 
The functionality I want to talk about is called explain math and table. And you already see an example right here because I was looking through this article and I was looking at some differential equations that was showing up here and I didn't understand what was going on. So what I can do is I can select explain math and table and then go to any mathematical equation. For example, I have this section of this paper called Shallow Architecture Type 2, and I have each training sample explained as a function, which is a differential equation. So maybe I don't understand what was going on, or I'm new to calculus. So what I can do is select this equation right there, and now Copilot has a sample of that equation, and now it's going to explain that math to me. Okay, it says the highlighted text is a mathematical equation that represents a kernel machine, a type of machine learning algorithm. The equation is used to predict the output value fx for a given input value x. The equation consists of several components. The first one is a constant value, which is added to the sum of other components. The second is a set of coefficients which are multiplied by the third component. The third component is a kernel function, kxxi, which measures the similarity between the input value and a set of training examples. Okay, that is actually pretty detailed, and I definitely understood more about this equation than before. So I can just go ahead and save part of this explanation to my notes, because maybe I wanna refer back to this later. So I can just click add note and paste it right there and save. And now this notes gets attached to this specific paper. You saw that I did write a note a minute ago, but that's not going to show up here because this note is attached just to this paper about scaling learning algorithms. The next functionality of Copilot that I want to talk about is learning about the data and methods used in a specific paper. For example, if I were to continue with this paper, I can learn more about what data was used here. So what I do is to click one of the suggestions provided here called what data has been used in this paper. It says the paper discusses the limitation of kernel methods and the paper does not mention any specific data sets used for the experiments. So as per the information provided in this paper, there's no information about its data. How about the methods used in this paper? So I can just click on methods used. The paper does not describe any specific methodology used for the experiments. However, the authors define the notions of shallow and deep architectures and discuss their native advantages and disadvantages using examples. All right, the next feature I wanna talk about is related papers. So if you're not happy with the information you're getting from a specific paper, what you can do is to exit full screen and click on related papers on the top here. So now I get five related papers I can work with. By the way, if you like looking at references and citations, all of them are provided here as well. The next feature of Copilot I want to talk about is learning about the limitations and conclusions of a specific paper. So if you go back to the suggestions right here, you can click this one called limitations of this paper to learn if there were specific limitations that were applied as a part of this research. Here it says this paper does not explicitly mention any limitations or drawbacks of the proposed algorithm. However, it's important to note that the algorithm is not the only approach to deep learning and there may be other methods that perform better on certain tasks. Next, let's look at the conclusions from the paper. It says the paper concludes that it is possible to learn a deep, densely connected belief network one layer at a time using the proposed algorithm. Now, if you want to save this as a note, you can just click save on a note right here and it gets saved automatically. You can of course copy this and save this to a Word document directly or you can actually share directly as a link right here which you can share on Twitter if you'd like. The next feature of SciSpace Copilot that I want to talk about is its language abilities. So if you click on the top right right here, you're going to see a bunch of languages that you can get your responses in. For example, if you want your responses in Latvian, you can ask a follow-up question, for example, maybe the results of this paper, and now all your future responses will come out in Latvian. I think this feature is especially helpful if you are forced to read a lot of papers in English and English is not your first language, so you might want to understand deeper concepts inside a paper in English 
but in your language. So I definitely think this is a really useful feature for global research. But make sure to change the language to English if you want to proceed or else all future responses will come out in Latvian. The next feature of SciSpace Copilot is the ability to ask questions in natural language. Now till now we've been using some of the suggestions that SciSpace Copilot provided us but we can actually go ahead and ask and type questions right here. For example, on this paper about cholesterol, maybe I can type something simple like, what is the cause of high cholesterol? It says the paper does not provide information on the cause of high cholesterol. It focuses on the relationship between HDL, LDL, and cardiovascular events in patients treated with statins. Let me ask, what are statins? It says statins are a class of drugs used to lower cholesterol levels in the blood. This paper discusses the relationship between HDL, LDL, and cardiovascular events. Let me ask what's the difference between LDL and HDL cholesterol. It says LDL cholesterol is often referred to as bad cholesterol because it can build up in the walls of arteries, leading to atherosclerosis and an increased risk of heart disease and stroke. HDL or high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, on the other hand, is often referred to as good cholesterol because it helps remove LDL cholesterol from the arteries and transport it to the liver for processing and elimination. What are some examples of cardiovascular events? This paper defines major cardiovascular events events as death from coronary heart disease, non-fatal, non-procedure related myocardial infraction, resuscitation after cardiac arrest, or fatal or non-fatal stroke. Alright, I definitely learned some good information here. I'm going to go ahead and save this one about LDL and HDL cholesterol. Alright, the next feature I want to talk about is the option to upload a specific PDF and do research on that PDF. I already have a new folder created for this called foreign because I want to upload something in a different language. I have this article which is in Japanese that I got from doing some research on harassment. So I'm going to click on that and now I can just click upload one file and this article now gets uploaded in a PDF format. Additionally, you can also import some document from your Zotero account, which is a place where you organize your research documents, but I don't have one, so I'm going to click cancel. Now, the last functionality of SciSpace Copilot that I want to talk about is the ability to explain and understand foreign language articles. So I just uploaded this article in Japanese. So when you open this up, you're going to see all the text here is in Japanese. So sometimes in your research, you might get access to papers or articles which are in different language, but they might have better information, but you don't know how to proceed with it because you don't understand it. And just using Google Translate on Chrome does not do the job with research. It just does exact translations, but does not do anything with explanations. So instead, what you can do is to select a specific piece of this article or maybe the whole of it, maybe from here to here, and then click explain text. And since I have my language set here as English, I can get the explanation in English, which I understand better. It says the highlighted text is about a Chinese feminist activist and scriptwriter named Zhao, who goes by the name Jianji. In 2018, she wrote an essay in which she revealed how she was harassed by a famous CCTV anchor named Zhu Zhen when she was a 21-year-old intern. She reported the incident to the police the next day, but was pressured to withdraw her complaint and eventually gave up. However, in 2018, her essay gained attention during the Me Too movement in China and Jian Ji sued Zhu Zhen in an apology and compensation. So this is some really good information that I would not have guessed by looking at this article in Japanese. So this is how SciSpace Copilot can be really useful in getting access to information which may not be in your language. And of course, if your own primary language is something else which is not English, you can also change it right here. For example, if I change this to Bosnian, I can get all future responses in Bosnian. Let me try that out just for fun. Select this section right here and click explain text. All right, now I have a paper written in Japanese which was explained to me in Bosnian. 
but unfortunately I don't know Japanese or Bosnian so I can't really read this out but if you're Bosnian maybe you can see if this is correct but for me this is pretty mind-blowing that I can do research in multiple languages both as a source and also getting an explanation in my native language. All right, that's all I have for you in this video. Hope you got some value from it. If you did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to my AI newsletter and YouTube channel and click like on this video. I have a lot more videos coming up. Till the next one, thank you so much.